The 300 to 400 cc sports bike segment in India is probably the most fierce. I mean, you basically have super bike level of technology trickled down into these amazing machines. And these two are probably the most fierce competitors out there. This is the 2024 KTM Duke 390 and this over here is the TVS Apache RTR 310. And these two bikes are absolutely amazing. But which one is for you? Let's find out. Let's first talk about the similarities both of these motorcycles have because there are quite a few. Both motorcycles have super aggressive looking front ends which look very alien like. Then you have some really nice looking digital instrument clusters on both motorcycles. Both motorcycles have the capability of switching off the rear ABS. Basically, they have super motor mode available. Then both motorcycles also have various different riding modes. The KTM gets three different riding modes. The TVS gets four different riding modes. Now let's talk about advantages and disadvantages. Now on paper, the RTR 310 does not have a lot of advantages over the Duke 390, but it still has a couple. So let's talk about them. First and foremost, you get heated and cooled seats on the RTR 310 and I think so this is a feature that is more or less unheard of in this segment. Second is of course the price. The price of the RTR 310 in its topmost spec is at least 70,000 rupees cheaper than the Duke 390 which is a pretty big chunk of money. So now let's head on to the Duke 390 and talk about all of its amazing advantages. Now if you just go as to the spec sheet, the Duke 390 takes the cake all day every day. Now the RTR 310 has its own charms and own really good features but let's talk about the advantages that the Duke 390 gives you. First and foremost is of course the power and torque. This thing makes 43 horsepower and 39 newton meters of torque. It has the bigger engine. It gets the brand new LC4C engine which is an absolute monster. Uh, it has the bigger brakes up front. It has 320mm brakes up front. The shocks and like the suspension also is super super high tech and much more advanced than the RTR 310. You get five clicks of adjustability for rebound and compression up front same as goes to the rear except you have 10 clicks at the rear uh, the fuel tank also is much larger on the duke 390 uh, it is 13 or 14 liters compared to the 11 liters that you get on the rtr 310 uh, the instrument cluster also has better graphics it looks much more crisp and overall uh, the duke 390 is the more impressive motorcycle i have to say on paper but let's get on to the RTR 310 and how it rides because that is, I think so somewhere, the RTR actually has a little bit of an advantage over the Duke 390, especially when it comes to a rider like me. Future Soham here coming in to rectify a small mistake made in the video. Remember how I said the RTR is significantly cheaper than the Duke 390? Well, it actually is, but there is a catch. The Duke 390 starts at an ex-showroom price of 3,10,000 rupees. The RTR in this Yellow Fury variant costs 2.72 lakhs X showroom. But that isn't the bike that's here with us today. At 2.72 lakhs, you don't get the heated and cooled seats and the race tuned dynamic stability control. These features are part of the Dynamic Pro kit under the BTO package that TVS provides, which costs an additional 22,000 rupees. Now, like the Duke, you can also get a fully adjustable suspension setup on the RTR 310 along with TPMS sensors and a brass coated chain. But that is part of the dynamic kit which costs 18,000 rupees. So if you want the full feature loaded RTR 310, the X showroom price increases to 3.12 lakhs which is 2,000 rupees more than the Duke 390. So if you're not keen on all of the bells and whistles, the RTR 310 makes a lot of sense. But if you want your RTR to be specced out, that's when you start considering the Duke 390. I would also like to mention that the RTR comes with cruise control as standard on all variants, which could be an added bonus for touring. But considering that the Duke is more comfortable at triple digit cruising speeds, it all depends on your perspective and preference on two wheels. But what matters is how these bikes feel under your bum. And in that sense, 
both motorcycles are a world apart. Now we all know the Duke 390 is probably the faster motorcycle, at least on paper, but there is more to it than just speed. The RTR 310, although on paper, might not be as powerful as the Duke 390, and this particular one doesn't even have the adjustable suspension, the RTR is actually the easier motorcycle to go fast on. The RTR gets a 10mm longer wheelbase, which makes the bike feel more stable at higher speeds. Pair that with the linear power curve which actually has more torque and grunt in the lower end, it makes for a bike that is much more accessible to ride. The linear power surge means you don't have to keep shifting down to overtake and it makes it much easier to ride in the city. The less committed riding position also means that you have less stress on your shoulders, back and wrist. The Duke 390 on the other hand is a much more raw motorcycle. The power delivery is like a turbocharged car. The low end is not very active, but once you go past the 4,000-4,500 RPM mark, the Duke 390 unleashes its shackles and absolutely f***s off. But the Duke 390 is not as confidence-inspiring as the RTR. It feels much more nervous and twitchy, especially for someone like me who doesn't ride a bike on the daily. The Duke 390 seems more for a person who is looking to extract every last drop of performance from the motorcycle, while the RTR 310 is happy to be your daily rider and carve up the canyon roads even if you're a rookie. The RTR and Duke both get 240mm rear disc brakes, while the Duke gets a larger 320mm disc up front compared to the 300mm on the RTR. But the braking performance of both the bikes are pretty similar, but in this particular case, the front suspension adjustability of the Duke means you have more control over the nose dive, which wouldn't have been a problem if the RTR had the dynamic kit. Talking about the suspension, in this particular comparison, the Duke takes the cake with its adjustable WP Apex USDs and Monoshock at the rear, but the RTR is very comfortable and compliant for our Indian roads even on the non-adjustable suspension. Yes, the Duke's performance is definitely intoxicating as the full grunt of the LC4C engine trumps the 310cc engine found in the RTR. But the RTR feels like the easier bike to go fast on which is a very big plus point especially for someone who is just stepping into the world of performance motorcycles. Let's quickly talk about design. Design is very subjective but I'm going to give you my opinion. Now when the new Duke 390 had come out, I was a big fan. It looks super mean, super aggressive and it looks like a proper evolution compared to the older outgoing Duke 390. I love the insect-like looking front end, the sharp creases and Bhavneet has chose a really nice colour and spec. Uh, but I think so when you compare it to the RTR 310, I think this bike just takes the cake. I think so the proportions of this bike are really nice. It really does stand out and for some reason I just feel like this is the more appealing bike to look at. It's just so much more proportionate, so much more nice to look at. I think so the proportions of the new Duke 390 are just a little bit off. But let's get back to the RTR 310. Uh, I like the fact that TVS has taken a lot of efforts in making sure that the RTR 310 looks significantly different compared to its siblings, the BMW G310R and the TVS uh, RR310 and the BMW G310 RR. I don't really like the fact that BMW took the RR310, slapped a BMW badge onto it and called it the G310 RR, whereas TVS has definitely not done that. They've made sure that this bike looks significantly different. I love the paint schemes that are there with this bike as well. And I think so, in my opinion, my favorite part has to be the front. I love the headlight design. It looks like a mini Ducati in my opinion. And yeah, overall, I think so this is the better looking bike in my opinion. But let us know in the comments down below, what would you choose? The RTR 310's 312cc single cylinder air cooled engine is co-developed by BMW and TVS, making this engine a great experience to use. It makes 35.6 PS of power and 28 Nm of torque in the RTR 310 guys. The engine is refined and although there were minor vibrations at the higher RPMs near the fuel tank, the bike feels really great to ride in the city. 
you can use the low end torque in the city and not be worried about constantly shifting gears or being in the wrong gear in slow moving traffic the heat management is also great and i didn't experience any sort of trouble with the bike heating up unusually coming to the duke 390 you of course get the new lc4c engine which is a 398 cc single cylinder air cooled engine which produces 46 ps of power and 39 newton meters of torque the duke's engine is a hoot to ride and is plenty fast for the city as well and for the track It's a very eager bike just waiting for you to drop a gear and disappear. But that could be an issue in the city since you will find yourself constantly shifting gears as the Duke seems to struggle with the low end RPMs. The Duke is also prone to heating up much much faster than the RTR which could be a bit annoying in slow moving traffic. But get an empty stretch of road and the Duke just goes. The bike just shoots off once you reach the higher RPMs. The bike feels like it's track ready from the factory and all you need to do is wear your fancy racing suit and hit up your local track and try to break some track records. Truly it's a bike that is ready to race. I think so all manufacturers that are there in India have understood the importance of the 300 to 400 cc segment. I mean there are at least 10 plus bikes competing in that same bracket. You have the Harley Davidson X440, the Maverick 440. Now you have a new Royal Enfield 450 cc motorcycle coming up. You have the RTR 310, the Duke 390, then you have the Speed 400, Scrambler 400, you have or kya Anyways you get the gist that there are way too many bikes in that segment but i think so these two stand out because they are the most versatile they have the most amount of capabilities and abilities in their segment i mean both bikes can be used as daily motorcycles they can be epic canyon carvers and both bikes can be taken to the track and you know basically have an amazing track day with and just the versatility that they have with their different riding modes their amazing traction control abs control and all of that stuff they have to be the most advanced motorcycles in the segment no other motorcycle in this segment has this sort of versatility when it comes to these two motorcycles when it comes to my preference well in my opinion if you're a novice rider just getting your hands on to you know proper powerful motorcycles the RTR 310 is what you should be looking at because it's just a more forgiving motorcycle has a more broader uh breadth of you know capabilities in terms of giving the rider what he wants uh, because the chassis is more forgiving the traction control and everything is just a little bit more safer whereas the Duke 390 once you switch everything off this thing just becomes into a completely different animal and you do need quite a lot of skill in in order to tame this motorcycle whereas the RTR it's a little bit more easier to tame in my opinion and both motorcycles are great in their own ways so let us know in the comments down below what you would choose will it be the RTR 310 or the Duke 390 uh, comment down below subscribe to the channel and we'll catch you in the next one